On my way back from Denmark for work last week, I stopped over in Munich, Germany to catch the last weekend of Oktoberfest. For those in the US, think state fair, but bigger, and with a huge emphasis on places to drink beer. In comparison, America's biggest fair is Texas at over 2 million people in about 24 days, while Oktoberfest sees about 6 million in only 16 days. And my first day was a Saturday, so it was crowded, despite the rain. else can you get the carnival ride and extremely old European city vibe at once? Not many places. Not the Wisconsin State Fair. There are three things to prioritize when you're there. Beer, food, and rides. It's a carnival verging on small amusement park with two full-size roller coasters and tons of thrill rides. Personally, I think whoever thought it was a good idea to combine so many spinning-based rides with an alcohol event was crazy, but here we are. The food might be my favorite part, actually. There are many repetitive stands, both for food and souvenirs, but it's in my personality to methodically walk every row and check anyway, and I found that there's also a lot of variation in the food, and some items I only found at one place. Fun fact, my Fitbit thinks I walked about 18 miles that weekend. I also agonized over what to actually eat myself, as I couldn't uh, try anywhere near to everything that I wanted. And so much is novel, as it's like Bavarian street food and other dishes I don't normally get to eat. For the most part, I found my favorite dishes to be the meat or potato ones, cooked hot and fresh there. Things like the candied nuts at the many stands for those, or the big pretzels, tended to be prepared off-site and not so special. Dessert was high quality, but the options were less exotic.
took a video of him handing this to me, then I turned off the thing so I could try it. But man, I gotta, I gotta turn it back on again because this is officially the best. It's Spetzel, but I'm gonna call it mac and cheese that I've ever had in my life. I have had two liters of beer recently, but that's only partially impacting things. For the record, the flavor was uh, bacon and peppers. That's what gave it the different color. The other thing I didn't even touch is that the beer, big beer tents all have their own menus for food they serve inside. That was often one of the distinguishing factors between them. For example, the fish tent versus the meat tent, but more on that later. I never spent much time actually sitting at a table in those, but I saw plenty of it being prepared and carried around precariously. As far as alcohol, you've got a lot of choices. Uh, random stands serving wines and other non-beer drinks, a number of what they call beer gardens, and then the big beer tents. All right, I'm continuing this uh, roller coaster beer and sausage filled day. I'm at one of the beer gardens now, which I think is way better than the beer tents. Way easier to get into, no lines, whatever. Uh, and they have regular beer, but they also have these like mixtures with cola as one of them. And then the other one is lemonade. So I tried cola already. Now I'm trying lemonade. Wheat beer and lemonade. It's good. Both the cola and the lemonade options I think are better than just the wheat beer. It's almost sunny out. I didn't know this happened in Europe at this time of year. I have to say that while there is an impressive amount of beer brands, the styles were all very similar. Wheat beers and lagers. What I would consider to be on the lighter side, though maybe Wisconsin has skewed me. All very drinkable, but to me not some miraculous special taste. You can watch locals discuss the full scoop on the differences between all the big tents elsewhere if you'd like. I made my way into a number of them on Sunday without a reservation so that I could check them out. Suffice to say the format is all the same. Big tables, a raised area for a band, kitchen, completely packed dirty restroom, and a bunch of staff running around delivering food and beer on an impressive scale. Um, the menus vary, the music varies, and the types of people that frequent the tent vary too, from partiers to locals to celebrities to tourists. There's also a whole more traditional area of the festival with a cover charge to get in. Things are more subdued, there's a museum, the music is folk or brass band, that kind of thing. I checked it out, but wouldn't consider it mandatory. <laughs> On Saturday night, my plan was to enter Hofbra Festelt, which is the biggest tent and the one known for English-speaking international folks, with capacity for over 10,000 people. Even so, myself and others in a big mass outside weren't let in for over half an hour of waiting, at which point they just let us all in at once. But I got to make friends in that line who I hung out with for the rest of the evening, so that was worth it. Um, this place was packed, but we were able to grab waitresses as they came by, and they played a lot of popular songs, so I stayed in there for like five hours. The vibe is just a massive party, so I'm gonna shut up here and just let you experience some of it.
The last thing I'll mention is that there is a whole city of Munich outside the festival. Um, I checked out some of the major landmarks on Sunday morning, like the town hall, massive churches and parks. In one of those, they built a canal to be a perpetual wave generator for people to practice surfing. Uh, that's a bit of a tourist destination itself. Overall, if you like European cities, Munich is one of those. Uh, but I do think the festival is what distinguishes it and makes this a special trip. I'm assuming that the water is supposed to come out of these, but instead they look absolutely horrified. Here. Shout out to Brian, Matthew, Cynthia, and all the other folks I met in the tent. Maybe I'll see you next time.